I'm pleased to have this opportunity to present my idea for the solar dollar, solar pound or solar euro project, uh, whatever unit applies in your particular area. Uh, it is one of many uh, alternative exchange media that I have proposed over the years. Uh, my previous book, uh, Money, Understanding and Creating Alternatives to Legal Tender, uh, outlines several other uh, possible approaches to uh, privately issued, community issued exchange media. Uh, I do have a um, slideshow to accompany my talk and I would like to share my screen and uh, start that. So I hope you can see it. Okay, so um, this is a, a way that I envision of empowering communities <clears throat> while powering communities with renewable sources of energy. And uh, I was led to uh, propose this uh, currency project uh, by the uh, objectives of, first of all, incentivizing a more rapid shift to renewable energy. Secondly, by helping communities become more resilient and self-determined, and also to enable the decentralization of economic and political power. Uh, I see these latter two as being essential because civilization is going through a major crisis. And uh, the only way I see of dealing with it is to rebuild civilization from the bottom up, community by community, because this crisis is multidimensional. Uh, there are several different aspects to it, which I've listed there. I won't uh, take the time to enumerate them, you can read them for yourself. And I think pretty much everyone by this time realizes that uh, this is a multidimensional crisis. And uh, the question is how we're going to deal with it. So first of all, a solar dollar currency, uh, you have to realize what it is as a credit instrument. And this is a credit instrument that's spent into circulation by an established and trusted utility company on the basis of its promise and ability to provide renewable energy to its customers. So basically it's a, it's a community currency uh, that creates supplemental exchange media in the form of solar dollars or solar pounds, if you will. And these uh, solar currencies are spent in their circulation. They're not, they're not sold. Uh, you don't have to have any conventional money to bring them into existence. All you have to have is the ability to produce and deliver uh, renewable energy. So the way uh, they are issued is by payments to suppliers and employees who voluntarily accept them as partial or full payment for the goods and services that they render to the company. So pictorially, I've represented it this way. Uh, we have three entities here uh, on the screen. On the upper right, you have the electric utility company, which will be the issuer of the solar dollars or solar pounds. Uh, on the upper left, we have a group, uh, employees, suppliers, contractors, all of those who might provide services and materials to the power company uh, in return for solar dollars. And at the bottom, we have everybody else who participates in the economy, uh, the merchants, the professionals, uh, businesses of all kinds, individuals in the community. And the way it starts out is uh, the electric utility company will pay out solar dollars, which it creates in return for the labor services and supplies that are provided by its vendors. Now, these employees, suppliers, and contractors, of course, uh, want to be able to use the solar dollars to get what they need and want. So they have uh, the opportunity to spend them into the community, uh, the local merchants, professionals, business providers of all kinds will accept them in return for the goods and services that these people want. And uh, 
then the solar dollars eventually uh, will be redeemed. But first of all, they can circulate any number of times uh, amongst these uh, people in the community and businesses in the community and provide the medium of exchange function as a supplement to conventional pounds or dollars or euros or whatever currency uh, is official in that region. And of course, uh, the electric utility company accepts those solar dollars in return for the electric services that it provides. So anyone who has an electric bill uh, can render those solar dollars back to the utility company to pay that bill. But it's important to realize that uh, solar dollars provide an alternative medium of exchange that can involve other people uh, outside of the utility company. So these solar dollars can circulate and provide uh, a supplement to the medium of exchange that may be in short supply in a community. So what makes these solar dollars valuable is uh, that they are acceptable to other vendors as payment because the issuing company, that is the utility, is ready, willing, and able at all times to accept its currency back as payment for electric services and for any other payment that's due to the company. Now, this is the case uh, with any effective community or local currency. Uh, the issuer must be ready, willing, and able at all times to deliver value in return for it. So what we're doing here is we're providing a proper incentive for the shift to renewable energy because what the utility company gets is an interest-free source of credit from its suppliers. And in order to get that interest-free source of credit, it has to provide renewable energy. So the amount of solar dollars that it will be allowed to issue will depend on the amount of renewable energy that it is able and willing to sell to its customers. So public acceptance of the company's solar dollar energy vouchers as payment encourages the company to provide more energy from renewable sources for this reason. So the benefits to the company, of course, are the interest-free source of credit, but there are also benefits to the community. Uh, this is a source of homegrown liquidity for the community because it provides this supplemental means of payment that can circulate, as I described, uh, throughout the community. And in the process, by augmenting the supply of scarce official money, it can connect unused capacity of local businesses with unmet needs and desires of people in the community. It enables more complete use of the available labor because now the businesses in the community uh, <clears throat> being able to uh, sell more of their capacity can employ more of the available labor. <clears throat> and it provides a sound exchange medium that stays local and encourages local economic activity and development. And the reason is, of course, that uh, in order for the reciprocity circuit to be completed, uh, the solar dollars need to ultimately be delivered back to the issuing company. So there is a long history of alternative currencies <clears throat> and exchange media. Uh, railway notes were issued on a similar basis in the 19th century. Uh, railway companies who would issue uh, currency based on their ability to provide uh, passenger uh, transportation. Now, there were numerous script issues during the Great Depression in the United States and many European countries, probably the UK as well. Uh, <clears throat> we have credit clearing circles like the, the Veer, which is now a conventional bank in, in Switzerland. Canadian tire money is a quintessential rebate currency. Uh, we have commercial barter exchanges that have popped up since the 1970s and scores of those are operating successfully around the world. We have LET systems, which you're probably all familiar with. They've been quite prominent in the UK. Uh, time dollars, provincial currencies. <clears throat> and uh, since about 1990, 
many different local community currencies. Uh, you have a number of those in the UK and on the continent. Uh, in the UK, I can mention Bristol pounds, Brixton pounds, Lewes pounds, and many other such currencies. But those are all issued on the basis of conventional currency. They have to be sold into circulation. Uh, people have to create them uh, by spending conventional currency. Uh, solar dollars and uh, the kinds of currencies that I propose, in contrast, uh, do not need to be uh, based on any conventional currency. We may use the conventional currency unit uh, in parallel, but we don't have to have conventional currency to bring them into existence. And we don't have to involve banks either because the companies, the producers and sellers of renewable energy themselves uh, create the currency on the basis of their of ability to provide that value to the community. So further benefits uh, that come out of this uh, will be, as the benefits of this project become apparent, it can become a model for other communities to emulate and other businesses to emulate as well. Uh, this project can provide a great image boost for the utility company, for the local community, for the region, and help to establish it as a hub of creativity and innovation. Uh, all those entities that are involved will gain in prestige and uh, general benefits. Now, I've uh, included here a number of sources. My main website is called beyondmoney.net. Uh, I have a white paper that describes in detail the solar dollar project. Uh, my book, which Lubo mentioned, The End of Money and the Future of Civilization. And my previous book, Money, Understanding and Creating Alternatives to Legal Tender. And probably most importantly, uh, an article on my website, Local Currencies, What Works and What Doesn't, which contrasts uh, the kinds of currencies that I mentioned earlier, uh, the ones that are sold for conventional money against the ones that are issued by value producing and providing businesses like uh, electric power companies. And another uh, book that I highly recommend that uh, gives you some idea of uh, how technologies displace old technologies is The Innovator's Dilemma. The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen uh, describes what he contrasts between sustaining technologies and destructive or innovative technologies. And I see uh, these alternative exchange media that I've been proposing as disruptive or innovative technologies that have the potential of operating in parallel with conventional money and banking system. <clears throat> so I also see that environmental regeneration and strong, thriving, peaceful communities depend on one another, that we can't have one without the other. So at that point, uh, I think I'll leave it for questions and discussion. Uh, I do have some supplemental slides that we can use as points of departure if you wish. Uh, this is one of them. In general, requirements for a sound currency or credit system are these. Uh, you have to have a proper basis of issue. That is something that's in general demand and is available to be sold now or in the near future. You have to have a rapid re recirculation rate. Uh, you have to have competent, honest, and transparent management of the project. The project needs sufficient revenues to cover system operating costs. Uh, unlike Brixton pounds or Bristol pounds, it should not depend on uh, grants and awards uh, to sustain it. It has to be self-sustaining. And there needs to be effective oversight by the users of the currency. So I think I'll leave it at that point and uh, hope that we get some questions or discussion.